Okay, now um, let's talk about why linear static helps tremendously to check the product design. Uh, and I want to emphasize this slide because uh, a lot of people don't know these three things which are so uh, obvious when you are using linear static. So the first thing is uh, linear static is the most simple simulation you can do. So you have to know that because uh, you know there's a lot more analysis types behind that that you use in special cases but linear static is really let's say the basis. Uh, if you say I'm doing a finite element simulation most of the time it means that you're doing uh, linear static so from what I know like 90% of the analysis are done in linear static. Um, so then why do we use linear static? Because generally people who do product design they just want to know one thing. They want to know will my design fail? You know, will the stress be too high and will there be a problem in my in my design? And the third thing is that they want to know if it is overdimensioned because of course uh, your product can be very strong. It can be as strong as you want if you put annuals steel, you know, you can think like that. And if you're producing only one part, that's okay. You know, you're doing that in your uh, in your house. You can you can build whatever you want. But think about the company who has to build uh, millions of the same part. You know, one percent of uh, the material you save on that is maybe millions of dollars. So you really have to. Uh, it shouldn't be overdimensioned, and it shouldn't fail, of course. So those are two things that say that you check with linear static. Now, um, linear static will help you to avoid failure by preventing stress concentration and also uh, retain uniform stress distribution and eliminate the unnecessary parts and further strengthen necessary parts in order to produce an optimum design. So this is basically a more complex way to say all the things that I just told you previously. So uh, that's for the engineers who like uh, very complex sentences. So Now uh, let me talk to you very simply again. What is linear static? What, why is it called linear static analysis? And so I just took these three words, linear, static, analysis. Let's look at the first word, linear. So it's called linear because the relationship between the load applied to an object and the response of the object, which means displacement stress, is linear. So you see I have a curve, so this is basically uh, the force is proportional to the displacement. That's why it's called linear. It's static because the applied load does not vary based on the time and you are ignoring the inertial and damping forces. So what does it mean? It means basically that you consider that when you apply the load in linear static, the load is applied so slowly that uh, the model doesn't feel the moment when you apply the load and you can consider that the load is always applied on the model uniformly and it doesn't depend on the time. So you are ignoring, let's say, the moment where you apply the load. So this is why it's called static. So it actually doesn't move. That's, that's the, the thing. It's static. Now, be careful. So that's why I put a big warning. Uh, there are some assumptions ahead that you have to know. Linear static only works if you can verify the assumptions. And this is something that I have to tell several times because a lot of people who uh, are not careful about that, they're just thinking, oh, finite element analysis is like that. So they don't know actually that there are more than analysis types that linear static, they just do like that. And they apply the same method to every type of analysis. But be careful, that's not true. It's only valid when the assumptions are validated. So what are the main assumptions? So you have two types of assumptions. So you have the assumptions because of the linearity. So three main assumptions. The first is that your material behaves within the elastic region uh, following the Hooke's law. So you see on the right you have the curve. So this is let's say general curve for steel material. And 
you always suppose that you are in the elastic region here on the left which is considered as linear. So you have linear relation between uh, the stress and the displacement. So uh, def deformation must be small, so this is the second thing, the deformation must be very small uh, and else to, to ignore the changes in the structural stiffness due to the deformation. So it uh, basically comes from the first uh, relation as well because as you see on the curve if you are in the linear elastic region your displacement has to stay small otherwise if it's bigger you go off this zone uh, but it also means uh, other things uh, and actually Hooke's law is not linear if let's say uh, you you don't consider the small deformation so yeah it's more complex and it's not linear so this is why these as assumptions allow the fact that you can you know you can consider the linearity. The third condition is boundary condition must not change. So while a load is being applied at the at the at a certain position, your structural deformation is occurring, but you cannot say that, oh, because there is deformation, so my load is changing the direction. No. In linear static, your load stay always the same direction. That's assumption. The second, uh, the second, let's say, set of assumptions is the assumptions because of the time dependency, because as I was telling, this is static, so loads do not vary in time. So here on the right, you have a sinusoidal force uh, loading, so you cannot, you cannot consider this type of loading in linear static. The second uh, is that you ignore the inertial and the damping forces, so, for example, acceleration, deceleration, uh, you can think about Coriolis, maybe. So, all these forces are ignored in uh, linear static. Now, um, I, w I told you at the beginning that I will tell you a very simple uh, formula that tells about uh, the linear static, and this is it. This is the Hooke's law. So, if you consider a simple spring, you know, you can express the relation between the force uh, and the, the displacement like that, F equal K delta. And this is basically uh, what we, we associate a linear static analysis with a spring. So it means that this is only in one dimension. So in one dimension you have a relation like that, so the, the K is a constant and the F is proportional to the displacement. If you are in three-dimensional, the f becomes a vector and the, the, the delta becomes also a vector and the k becomes a matrix with uh, nine components. So this, but this is still the same concept. So the k is the stiffness. So it means that your model in linear static will react like a spring. When you apply a force of one kilogram and you have a deformation of one millimeter, it will be proportional. So if you have 10 kilogram, you increase the force, your displacement will be proportional of 10 millimeter. This is very important to understand that. And from what you see here, you can think, oh, what if I increase the, 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 the force like 100 kilo? kilograms, will I have 100 millimeter of displacement? This is where you have to be careful because if you have that, you're not verifying the assumptions that you are in the small displacement. And that's where it's wrong. So in this case, you cannot use this formula. 